Hey, Steve here at Silk Road Catalyst. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you needed God to come through big time? Well, I've been in that situation a number of times, and today I'm going to tell you about Russia. So let's dive into it. My one and only trip to Russia was in 2002. Now, I was involved in East Asia, but my church at the time had asked me, could I lead a short-term mission team to Russia and then also on that Sunday while we're there, preach at their partnering church? So naturally, weeks before departure, I began preparing for this sermon. But every sermon I wrote out, I knew it was wrong and I ended up throwing it away. And as we inch closer to departure, I was getting a little bit concerned because I felt like my mind was in this fog as I was preparing. But I was committed to preach, so I didn't ask them to change anything. I just went with the flow. When we arrived in Russia, I still didn't have a sermon ready. And when we arrived at the church on Sunday morning, I still didn't have a sermon ready. And when the translator came up and asked me, what are you going to be preaching about? I just kind of randomly gave her some verses and didn't say anything else to her. I just said, you know, just listen and, you know, you'll figure it out. Which is not something I highly recommend doing when you're preaching and much less preaching with a translator. But that's the situation I was in. So as we were worshiping in the service, I am not kidding. Five minutes before it was my time to stand up and preach, the fog lifted and the entire sermon just swooped down and engulfed my heart. And it lined up perfectly with the verses I gave my translator. So when it was my time to get up and preach, I preached a little, she translated. I preached some more, she translated some more. And near the end of the sermon, I spoke one sentence. And then suddenly, she just starts talking for the next 10 minutes. And of course, I'm thinking, I may not speak Russian, but I kind of got this feeling that she's saying a whole lot more than I just said because I'm sorry, you don't need 10 minutes to translate a sentence, but you know, I just let her talk. Then the service ended and my team and I, with the missionaries we were working with that week, went out for lunch. And while we were at lunch, the missionary's wife looked at me and said, do you want to know what your translator was rambling about the whole time at near the end of the sermon? Of course I wanted to know. It was quite a long translation. You see, my translator was the pastor's wife, and she was battling something fierce in her life. And the whole congregation knew about, so they had been praying for her for months. And during those 10 minutes that she was translating, she was telling the congregation that everything I was teaching on was exactly what she needed to hear from God. And at that moment, the whole church began to give thanks to God for what He was doing through the sermon. And the fact that I struggled for weeks preparing the sermon just proved that it was all God in what was happening. Sure, God could have given me that message weeks in advance, but He didn't. Instead, He knew that the only way to keep me sensitive enough to the Holy Spirit so I would speak exactly what God designed for me to speak that morning was to keep me in a fog up until five minutes before I spoke. Now, I'm not suggesting that God works like this in every situation all the time, but the point I'm trying to make is don't limit God. You may feel completely ill-equipped in ministry, whether you are a vocational minister or a lay person, but our God is huge. And He will carry you through and use you in amazing ways, just like He did with me, in Russia. And all you need to do is live surrendered to Him. Hey, if you found this story helpful, I encourage you to like it, share it, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I'll see you next time.